Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Video Vices, a contemporary research podcast. And this time, we're coming at you live. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B. And folks, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of the show. We're excited to bring you some broader AV industry thought leadership today. As we do so, I want to make sure you're getting all of the contemporary research content you desire. We have plenty of audio podcasts for you to uh, dive into and get some broader context on evolutions across the AV industry. Uh, we discuss technologies. We discuss uh, career paths and how they intersect. So make sure that you head to our website, contemporaryresearch.com. Again, contemporaryresearch.com, as well as subscribe to Video Vices on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Just hit that subscribe button and you'll have a full catalog of previous conversations plus notifications when we drop new ones. All right, team, on today's podcast, we're going to be exploring one of the many industry trends that was accelerated by the pandemic. And in this case, it's going to be the adoption of AV over IP solutions. General use cases for audiovisual displays, as well as collaborative video conferencing and content broadcasting, were all pushed to embrace AV over IP as a standard during the pandemic crunch creating a singular environment for crafting investment strategies as well as use case strategies. And if we surveyed end users, they would probably agree with me here that AV over IP is a quality and a scalable infrastructure for AV needs because of the way that it offers uh, delivery of high definition video over data networks with superior quality for both the video and the data. And it's proving to be cost effective as well, which we'll dive into here in our conversation. Uh, but what we're really wanting to do is get granular on why AV over IP is proving so useful regardless of use case. And we want to offer some strategies on how to deploy an AV over IP network at scale effectively Effectively, especially now that it's been validated at such a mass scale over the last year, year and a half. So for insights today, I'm pleased to welcome our two thought leaders. First up, we've got Paul Briggs. He's AV Product Support Manager with Contemporary Research. Paul, great to have you on. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, everybody. It's great to have you back on. Good to be chatting again. I know we've had some conversations in the past, and now we've got you live on video, so it's going to be a, a fun time. We're also joined as our second thought leader uh, by Mr. Craig Brown. He's president of Shoreline Communications. Craig, great to have you on. How are you? Very well. Thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you on as well. Uh, what I want to do real quick before we get into the core of our conversation is give you both an opportunity to share sort of an elevator pitch on your background and career, and more importantly, how that intersects with the perspectives you're going to be sharing on the podcast today. Basically, just letting our audience know how your expertise informs uh, your thought leadership. So, Paul, we'll start with you. Give us that quick little summary. Um, well, my background is I came uh, from an AV integrator that I worked at for oh, 27 years. Um, and then I started working here in about 2016 because um, contemporary research was really looking for somebody that had experience out in the field, you know, installing and servicing, you know, AV gear. And then uh, Craig, I guess same question to you there. Uh, and also, if you don't mind, intersecting uh, Shoreline Communications and its place in the broader market as well. You bet. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, indeed, I've, I've been in the audiovisual industry now for, gosh, a little over 30 years, and uh, 18 of which I've been um, a, a part of Shoreline Communications, which is a, a AV manufacturer's rep firm here in the Southeast. And um, uh, I do represent contemporary research and have been for 15 years, as well as uh, another uh, handful of companies that uh, do play around in the AV over IP um, uh, marketplace. Uh, and uh, so I, I have been selling uh, solutions into these applications for quite some time and, um, and certainly have uh, learned from those experiences and understand uh, what we've all been through the last, uh, last, you know, gosh, 18 to 24 months and how it has indeed validated this application as well. So I appreciate your time this morning. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when you say, you know, coming up 24 months now, it's like, wow, I cannot believe we've been uh, this deep into this reality now for so long. But, uh, you know, there are some silver linings. And I think what we're going to be breaking down today is one of those silver linings, which is just the mass validation of AV over IP solutions, which Again, this isn't a new technology. It already had a lot of applications um, and a lot of successful use cases before a pandemic took us into sort of remote workflows at scale. Uh, but the accelerated adoption of these uh, technologies motivated some innovative use cases and got different industries thinking, how can we put this to use in effective, efficient, and uh, exciting, innovative ways? So let's jump in. I want to start by breaking down some of the reasons why you're seeing AV over IP get validated to end users and what's motivating its spread. We kind of already hinted at one of the core motivators, but if you had to expand or uh, just dig in a little deeper into the actual granular reasons why, what would those be and why? Sure. Um, you know, Paul, if you don't mind, I, I wouldn't mind starting on that. Um, okay. It, it, you know, I think we all can uh, can relate to the fact that, um, that we've been uh, deal, having all kinds of fun with technology at home uh, over the years. And obviously the, the pandemic has required that we be at home more often and use that technology more often. And so uh, the fact that, that, um, that we have kind of become experts uh, with technology in our home uh, has required that uh, this same kind of experience is brought to the, um, to the, uh, to the corporate office or, or, or the university that you're involved with. Uh, so um, having the ability to, um, to have that same experience uh, while working or while at school or in the courtroom, whatever it may be, um, has certainly accelerated the need for these kinds of applications. Uh, the ability to uh, you know, kind of have the ability to bring in an unlimited amount of sources, um, certainly, uh, you know, I, Obviously, when I say unlimited, that uh, there are some caveats to that, uh, but there are uh, the uh, you do have the ability to bring in uh, any number of sources as um, inputs and/or outputs, for that matter. Um, the distance barrier is uh, almost kind of neg uh, negligible uh, in that um, that uh, really you can you can reach just about anywhere across the world uh, with AV or over IP if done properly. Um, and then lastly, something that comes to mind is that, you know, you certainly are um, future proofing yourself in that, uh, you know, that, you know, you know, everything is being done over IP these days. And so if you uh, are starting to, to, to deploy um, IP based solutions in this regard, uh, you are pr uh, protecting your investment moving forward. Oh, I wanted to, to add that, um, I guess, one of the other appeals. Um, is that um, it's pretty easy to add AV over IP, you know, to existing networks. So somebody may already have infrastructure in place that they can, you know, take advantage of without, you know, the cost and expense of, of new cabling. And that's important too, because, uh, you know, every industry dealt with its own version of a budget crunch and as we deployed these solutions to be not only resilient in the short term, but also hopefully provide some direction for uh, useful investments in the long term, there had to be that thought process too, right? Do we invest completely into totally new infrastructure, whether that be cabling, whether that be uh, supporting technology uh, to make the distribution of our content, make the distribution of our data, make the analysis of our data flow effective. And all those compounding issues start to feel a little overwhelming. So we'll also provide some strategies here in a little bit on how to maneuver that. I want to chat a little bit more about how AV over IP has changed over the years, and not just in the last 18 to 24 months, but maybe you know, if we look back at the last five years even. What about the technology's recent innovations have allowed AV over IP to meet the moment and scale like it has, right? What is giving it that extra juice and why? Oh, I guess I can answer that. I, I think the biggest... Um... The biggest improvement um, has been been um, 
because of the new the new codex, the new more efficient um, video codex. So you can get high quality video with less data packets, so less bandwidth, less overhead. Um, so just more a more efficient transfer of, of good quality video and and audio. You know, um, I, I think another um, another uh, reason for uh, uh, or another recent innovation that I think has made these applications or AV over IP applications more uh, attractive is, um, you know, and, and just look at the pandemic. Uh, you know, the, the, the pandemic is has required that uh, folks uh, bring their own device. Uh, you know, we've, we've heard the, the, the term BYOD in our industry for years, and um, that has been really validated during the pandemic in regards to not touching things that aren't yours, if you know what I mean. Um, so there's been a, a number of, of manufacturers uh, out there that have, have um, created solutions that are BYOD solutions that allow you to bring your own content to meetings, bring your own content to, um, to work and present from them. Uh, so, um, and, and that requires an AV over IP infrastructure to, uh, to do so. Right, right, exactly. And, uh, you know, having that robust infrastructure as well, and the fact that it has uh, evolved naturally to meet the demands of the moment uh, has made this transition much more palatable, I think, to a lot of decision makers across various industries. Uh, I guess on the flip side of that, do you still feel any hesitancy from any end users or any particular industries about using AV over IP compared to a more traditional AV deployment? If so, why are you feeling any of that hesitancy and uh, how have both of your companies worked to assuage some of those sentiments, especially uh, you know, during the pressure of having to decide how do we adjust our workflows for the pressures of the time? You know, um, uh, Paul, if you don't mind, um, Daniel, the it, hey, the almighty dollar is still at play here. <laughs> um, you know, uh, budget does uh, does indeed dictate, um, and um, you know that uh, it, you know for those who don't have a robust network in place uh, to be able to accommodate for an AV over, over IP network, and uh, may have you know sensitive budgets that won't allow for a a, a separate AV network. You know that that certainly can hinder for sure. Um, you know there. Uh, you know if you've got other infrastructures that are in place. Um, you know that you may want to take advantage of. Uh, that certainly is uh, food for thought uh, in that topic as well. Uh, I know we at Contemporary Research uh, deal with that quite a bit, uh, and uh, we you know can deploy over IPO and over RF networks, and and so we we, we do find some hesitancy. Uh, for folks who have um, other kinds of infrastructures in place uh, to go IP, uh, but uh, but that that would be maybe some of some of the more common things, but um, uh, that, that I would run into. Paul, what are your thoughts? Well, I think um, part of it is just kind of knowledge about the technology, and I, th I think education is kind of key um, to to you know getting more people to you know adopt the technology. Um, I mean, there's there's kind of a learning curve if you've never done it before. But um, once people get comfortable with it, then you know the sky's the limit. <laughs> what have been some of your strategies for delivering on that education? If that is so critical, uh, are you having to create completely new touch points with end users through? I don't know, fresh online communities or hosting seminars and educational courses, or is this more about uh, running your educational resources through already existing channels, uh, trade organizations? What have been your strategies? I would suggest kind of all of the above. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and then I guess part of part of my role here at, at CR, um, you know, I'm, I'm I do spend time one on one with uh, you know consultants and designers and you know integrators that have questions you know either before a project or you know when they're deploying the project or even you know troubleshooting somebody else's project <laughs> yeah and it's important to keep those uh touch points active too once you 
already tap in and start to educate the uh, the audience and the I guess the broader industry. Uh, I think that starts to build some trust and some validation and uh, making those touch points consistent. Um, I'm sure pays off as well because it's yeah hard to communicate some of these things and center the validity of a technology solution or the uh, pure motivation for why you need to invest in it with just one interaction, right? Or one quick little PDF one pager. I think it takes multiple touch points. It takes, uh, you know, showing some of these technologies being used effectively at scale to get people to understand the why, and then you can help them uh, maneuver the how and the implementation process. So yeah, great to hear that education is coming in handy there. I think that's going to continue to, yeah. uh, to to be a big one. So let's go ahead and chat more specifically about AV over IP as the technology. Let's validate it some more here on the podcast. I want to break down some of the core advantages that we hear about AV over IP. Get your thoughts on you know, how advantageous are these advantages? Uh, do they really uh, create that much of a positive differentiator as a solution and how they're being applied in practice? So let's start with limitless scalability. Uh, you know, limitless is a big word there, right? So how limitless is AV over IP and its scalability really? And how does this differ from application to application? You know, um, I, I hate to uh, be repetitive, but... Uh... But the almighty dollar in a, in a robust network um, certainly, uh, you know, plays a part uh, for sure. Um, you know, the, the, when IP systems first came out, uh, you know, the, the cost differential was, you know, significantly higher than, than what others were. Uh, that, that obviously has leveled off over the, over the years uh, with its, um, you know, uh, where we're, as to where we are now. Um, but, um, but certainly it does still play a part. Um, you know, a, you know the, the fact that you can, that any port on your network can be an input or an output, um, boy, that's, that's just attractive and um, it allows for, uh, for the ability to, to have some quote unquote limitless scalability uh, built into your system. Um, so what, um, it, it definitely does provide some, some capabilities for growth in the future in a very easy and simple, simple way, for lack of better terms. Yeah, and I think you know part of it can be that that really the cost of just network infrastructure has gone down. You think about you know what a one gig switch cost you know five or ten years ago compared to what it costs now. It's just so much less expensive to to have you know the network infrastructure in place, and plus you know the cost of the encoders and decoders that's that's been going down too um, over the years. Yeah, that's important too. Those cost savings. Uh... They scale quickly. They domino yeah. effect quickly. Yeah. Um, speaking of, let's chat some of the, um, I guess, codec benefits to AV over IP as well. So another one of the advantages we often hear about why AV over IP is such a uh, valuable and uh, validated option for AV deployments is its advanced video compression. So uh, video compression codecs such as H.264, which... Is a big one. I'm super familiar with that one. I, you know, make a lot of fun little videos in my spare time and uh, H.264. So it, it's chonky, but it's got obviously high quality. Uh, it's also called AVC for advanced video coding. H.264 makes it possible to transport massive files that deliver high definition video. So how is this intersecting with AV over IP? How is this elevating how companies strategize around their AV, both their quality as well as their deployment strategies? Connect those dots for us. Paul, you want to start on that one? Well, okay. Um, I guess first off, you know, I, I guess you, you were thinking of the, the AVC um, when you're saying transport massive files because, and actually there's there's some truth to that, that AVC, um, is the um, is the encoding that's on your Blu-ray disc? So you know you think about all the data that's on your Blu-ray disc. But of course, with AV over IP, we're transporting just really data packets. So we're able to get you know better quality video you know with less data packets. Um, and and I think for people that are designing networks, you know they they need to, to consider you know what their bandwidth requirements are going to be. Um, and so that's that's one of the things that helps them. Um, you know they they don't have to dedicate um, as much network resources to the AV over IP since the um, 
the HEDC codec is, is more efficient. I'm sorry, ABC is more efficient. Um, I, I mentioned HEVC because that's that's the H.265 that is um, starting to, to um, emerge a little more, more and more um, for AV over IP. So we're, we're kind of even getting more efficient, um, you know, as time goes by. Yeah, and I'm, uh, and, and yeah, uh, I kind of will approach this question more from a kind of a, a higher point of a uh, high, uh, kind of a top down, top looking down point of view. Uh, you know, I, I think that the that with the realization that uh, what we're experiencing at home with our technology and now what we expect when we go to the office, um, I'm finding that um, employers are needing to provide more reasons for employees to want to get to the office. And so there needs to be a kind of a, a wow factor and a splash. And so that, I believe, has helped AV over IP uh, because it, uh, it, it, it does allow for um, you to achieve these, these different kinds of um, applications, if you will, uh, to, uh, you know, to just make the environment at work, uh, at school, whatever it may be, uh, to be a, uh, a, a to make it have a bit more of a wow factor, if, if you will. And certainly with the ability to move content, high definition content around with smaller packets, as, um, as Paul alluded to, uh, it certainly makes it more, more of a reliable solution uh, to be able to pull off that kind of an app. One of the other benefits or advantages that we hear of AV over IP is its robust product offerings and the fact that it has a supporting ecosystem that has also innovated and uh, found ways to improve data flow, content quality, et cetera, et cetera. So can you break that down for us? Where has the AV over IP ecosystem grown to support this accelerated adoption of AV over IP? And if you had to choose a few, which devices are key to consider in a mass AV over IP deployment as critical and why? Hey, Paul, uh, if you wouldn't mind touching on the network side of things, I've got a couple of ideas on, on some of the front end kind of things, if, if, if you would. Um, well, I guess one of the points I I could make is that there's there's a lot of products available that support the technology from a lot of different manufacturers, and some of them are kind of can be um, used interchangeably, and um, that can be even like on the decoder side. If you're on the receiving end, that could be a hardware decoder, or it could be a software decoder. Like a you know, a, a, it's really easy to download like VLC Media Player um, and put that. content pretty easily um, or you know there's dedicated hardware decoders um, for large displays and video walls and things like that um, so and then on the on the encoding side there's the same thing you've got software encoders um, that you can install on your laptop and then there's just the hardware encoders um, so so your options are certainly there for, for whatever you need yeah, you know, and then the um, you know you know everyone has has had their fair share of Zoom and and uh, Microsoft Team meetings and so forth. And that's not going anywhere. It's obviously just going to grow from this point forward with all the providers of that nature. And uh, you know, the advent of of the really the reliability of those kinds of platforms um, has um, has certainly helped to accelerate uh, this application. Uh, the uh, uh, I, I represent a, a, a manufacturer that um, uh, called Wolf Vision that manufactures some um, you know, products that are uh, enable you to wirelessly connect and and basically do a BYOD application. There are a number of other manufacturers that are out there that are doing that as well. Uh, so those kinds of applications, the uh, Mercivs of the world, the Barcos of the world. Uh, Wolf Vision of the world, uh, those kinds of things, those kinds of solutions have helped to, uh, again, bring AV over IP into the forefront uh, and make it a bit more of a reality uh, for um, everyday applications. 
Um, and of course, working from home, um, you know, that's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And so uh, the reality that, that, that this is what the future kind of looks like for, for quite some time uh, has forced the evolution of um, all kinds of devices and solutions in the marketplace to, uh, to make Avia over IP such a, vi a viable option for deployment in, in, um, in the industry today. There are some larger scale trends that are also impacting uh, the viability of AV over IP integrations. Uh, that would be just the lingering effects of the pandemic on the supply chain. Uh, we still see things like material cost disruptions, labor shortages, um, uh, a, a variety of touch points across the supply chain, losing a lot of efficiency, or at least uh, getting revealed as not having been ever efficient, right? So I'm wondering, have some of these disruptions impacted the viability of AV over IP at all? And how have both of your companies adjusted to uh, you know meet some of these challenges head on? How are you seeing end users adjust? Break that down for us. Sure. Uh, so, you know, uh, the supply chain, I think uh, the, the issues that the industry and really that the world is seeing in the supply chain period uh, is affecting everything uh, from uh, wood to build a house to uh, products, uh, chips that go into an AV over IP solution to chips that go into some other traditional AV matrix switcher, for lack of better terms. So I, I don't think that the that the supply chain issues are um, uh, only affect AV over IP, uh, but as a, a general a general uh, sense, it's it really is affecting everything. Uh, with that being said, uh, there are you know certain manufacturers that um, that aren't touched by it as others. Thankfully, at Contemporary Research, we haven't had those issues. Uh, but with that being said, um, you know you, you you really have to prepare well in advance and you you do have to anticipate that there's going to be longer lead times for deployment of solutions uh, and truthfully procurement and delivery of solutions because there is definitely a a uh, logistical problem out there uh, that doesn't appear to be resolving itself quickly uh, so i do think it is something that is is out there you do have to plan for it uh, there's not a whole lot that, that your integrator can do, that your manufacturer can do if they're touched by this. Um, you know, we're at the mercy of the shipping lines, and you know, we hear every day that there's a, another ship stuck somewhere um, or, uh, or ships uh, waiting off the coast of California or Florida somewhere waiting to be loaded. So it's, it's, it's not a problem that's going to be going away anytime soon. It is something that you do need to plan for for a long term because it, 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 it is legitimate. All right, Paul, Craig, uh, one more main uh, AV over IP advantage and benefit that I want to hone in on here as we start to wrap up the conversation, but that would be the reliability of a deployment of this kind. Does the fact that IP uh, is usually a more modular ecosystem with varying layers that you can adjust for your different use cases, does that make AV over IP a more reliable solution as a deployment? If so, what are some of the domino effects? How does this impact cost, time, uh, you know, to deploy and resources used? Break that down for us. Well, I think, um, you know, the, the, I guess the modular aspect on kind of medium to large scale networks, you know, the network engineers will design it to have like automatic fail safe backup switches that, that'll, that'll come up online um, in the event of a failure. And, and you know, from the user point of view, they won't notice a direct disruption at all. So I, I think that's one advantage of, of you know, doing the AV over IP um, be, because of the redundancy that can be engineered into the network. Um, and so that, yeah, really just, you know, makes it more reliable. Sure. Well, I'm sure that reliability is going to be a major selling point. As Craig has said many times, the almighty dollar loves to have its input as well. So if you are investing in an AV deployment for today's needs or trying to respond to both the short term and the long term, the reliability 
of uh, an IP solution is going to greatly determine whether or not AV over IP is uh, worth your time and your energy. So last question then for both of you is where do end users need to center some of their internal research, right? Their understanding of their needs, uh, understanding of their industry, uh, their content distribution, their data flow, right? Where do they need to center that research of needs to know where an IV, uh, or excuse me, where an AV over IP deployment is right for them, right? Uh, what are some of those core metrics they need to center and understand before they make that kind of decision and why? You know, I think uh, a, a often overlooked um, and simple, really, when you, kind of, when you kind of think about it, a, a logical starting point is what's the workflow for your application? You know, what, it, what does it look like on a daily basis um, when you go into a meeting room, uh, when you go into a classroom and uh, students or employees start interacting with one another digitally um, and um, uh, both locally and afar, globally, um, what does that look like? Um, you know, are, are you going to be uh, just connecting, uh, you know, iPads and, and cell phones to a, to a screen or are you going to be streaming live video um, and, um, and, and so forth. Uh, so, you know, a lot of that um, will dictate uh, the, the, the solution, obviously the network requirements, uh, but it's a, I find often in the applications that I go into that um, oddly enough, that, that uh, workflow um, is kind of glossed over. Um, and, I, and, I find, and, that, and that's often surprising to me uh, because that, that really does dictate um, what your system's going to look like and what your network needs to look like to support it. Yeah, I think that's important um, to understand your workflow. And, and I think um, a good resource is really um, for an end user is to, is to seek out um, an experienced AV integrator. So maybe the end user may not conceptually understand his workflow, a, a good integrator can help him help him identify that and get it all down on paper and then determine, Indeed. you know, the best, you know, the best solutions for, for that customer. And I think on that note, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's show. So thank you to the two of you for your thought leadership today. I appreciate you sharing some insights and strategies on uh, why AV over IP is getting so much validation across various industries and how end users can take some of that information, assess what the benefits are, and deploy it for their needs. So thanks again to the two of you. It's been a pleasure chatting. Again, we've been speaking with Paul Briggs, AV Product Support Manager with Contemporary Research, and Craig Brown, President of Shoreline Communications. Craig, if folks want to find out more about some of the work Shoreline is doing in this space, uh, how you fit into the broader AV over IP ecosystem, or they just want to get in touch, how can they do so? Uh, they can visit my website at www.shorelinecommunications with an S at the end, .net, or uh, shoot me an email at craig at shorelinecommunications.net. And lastly, uh, I'm also on Contemporary Research's website. Uh, there's a link for our, the, the rep firms that, that, uh, that, that, that they have, and I'm their rep in the Southeast, and certainly a link to my site and email is on, that, on Contemporary Research's site as well. Perfect. Craig, thank you again. And Paul, same question for you. If folks want to find out a little bit more about uh, Contemporary Research's place in the AV over IP ecosystem, or they want to get in touch for more guidance, more thought leadership, how can they do so? Um, yeah, so our website is um, www.cr, um, www.com, or I think it's contemporaryresearch.com. Mm -hmm. um, my email is paul at crww.com. Or we also have uh, support at crww.com. And those, those emails will come to me also. Perfect. All right, Paul, thank you again for your time. Craig, it's been a pleasure. And we'll chat with both of y'all again soon. Thank Thanks, you everybody. Time. And thank you, everyone, for watching another live episode of Video Vices, a contemporary research podcast. If you like what you heard and saw today and you want some previous episodes or you want to make sure you don't miss out on future thought leadership, make sure you're subscribing to Video Vices on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 
And for more thought leadership, more information about solutions and services, and for more guidance on how you can maneuver the AV over IP ecosystem, head to our website, contemporaryresearch.com. Again, contemporaryresearch.com. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Video Vices.